Hey guys, it's Bub here. In the past, we've taken a look at Ubuntu 11, which was a Linux-based clone of Windows 11, and that video is one of my most popular videos on this channel. So in this video, we're taking a look at Ubuntu 10. It's not actually officially called Ubuntu 10, it's called Ubuntu 11 Cinnamon Edition, so it's based off the Cinnamon desktop environment, but it is designed to be more like Windows 10 than Windows 11, which is why I'm calling it Ubuntu 10, because, well, it looks like Windows 10, and saying Ubuntu 11 just doesn't make sense if it looks like Windows 10. There was a lot of controversy about Ubuntu 11 when I originally did my video saying that it was spyware, saying that you can't trust the developers, and going on and on and on about just a whole bunch of crap, which, hey, we're not here to bash the developers, we're here to take a look at the operating system. Of course, I'm just throwing it out there, I would never use any custom operating systems by, you know, as my main OS, but to take a look at them in a VM, I'm of course not against that, as that's pretty much what we do on this channel. So let's go ahead and double click on Windows Ubuntu 11 installer, and let's walk through it and let's get this installed. We're going to erase the disk, next, and create an account. So our name will be Windows, and our password will be password, and hit next, and install. And we are now going to install Ubuntu. All right, and here we are. So just out of the box, this login screen does not look very Windows-like. Um, I actually do not like that at all. It looks, I would assume it's like the Cinnamon login, but I haven't seen Cinnamon in such a long time. But that did not look anything like Windows. I don't we don't have any VMware tools installed, but that login was so slow and painful that that was that was terrible but all right let's get this resolution cranked up here probably we'll go 768 and apply uh, that is not right at all that is not the resolution I wanted that's what I wanted all right so here we are in Ubuntu and I did not open that so by default on the desktop we have computer home network trash and copilot so we'll have to take a look at that and see what that actually, if that's real copilot. On the taskbar, we have our power session, uh, calendar, volume, and networking settings, Bluetooth, keyboard layout, CPU system monitor, and then pinned we have OneDrive, which, is that the real OneDrive? Oh, that is real OneDrive. I didn't even know OneDrive existed for uh, Linux, unless it's fake, because that says authentication address. That's a little suspicious. Only Office Center with the Microsoft Office logo, but this obviously is not Microsoft Office. This is something way out of not anything. This is the App Store, which appears to be just the GNOME Software Center. We have the File Explorer, which we'll visit that in just a minute. Microsoft Edge, which appears to be regular Microsoft Edge. I did know that they had this for Linux. But we're not going to actually set this up. We're going to close that. We have our workspace manager. I actually don't remember what it's called. Task view, I think. We have Cortana, which was discontinued a long time ago. Or, whoa, this isn't even Cortana. This is Helloa. That's unique. And it wants to be connected with our Google account. I'm not feeling too, uh, you know, confident that this is not, like, spyware. We have our search bar right here where we can go ahead and search for nothing because it doesn't work we have like our right click menu for the taskbar right here um, and then our start menu which this start menu icon literally just looks like a screenshot from Windows 10 it is so pixelated and so blurry and the start menu doesn't even look like Windows 10 start menu so we have the control panel which what is, is control panel just settings Yeah, it literally just opens settings, but it's really slow. The Windows Store, the File Explorer, Microsoft PowerShell, and hey, look, this is real PowerShell. I know PowerShell is available for Linux. Uh, lock the screen, so this is a totally different lock screen than what we saw earlier. That's crazy. Um, let's see. Log out and shut down. Uh, by default, accessories, I mean, I'm not going to read through all these, there's so many of them, but we'll just browse through them briefly. Steam comes pre-installed, uh, comes with some default graphics stuff. Comes with Microsoft Teams, RDP Client, RDP Viewer, uh, 
um, Citrix receiver, VMware Horizon client, Telegram, uh, Microsoft Online apps. So I guess this is your quote Office apps because I think these open. These are just the web versions uh, that open in Microsoft Edge. I would most definitely not sign into this. I don't trust this OS at all right now. Um, other settings. So yeah, I do remember this because I took a look at this when it was Linux FX, and apparently some components of the OS are still labeled as Windows or Linux FX as we can see right here Linux FX settings um, let's see what else we have here power toys update update uh, double update power toys register and Android sound and video we come with audacity cheese VLC Magnus which is a screen magnifier administration so all kinds of fun stuff here although what is users and groups that is unique like that's a Windows thing and it wants us to elevate our session and once we have used the UAC according to this the system appears to have freeze and we don't get anything preferences so this is like your settings but less you know settings wise like these are just menus places and then recent files let's take a look in settings here so by default you can actually pay for this by the way which I think is a huge scam. I think this whole thing is just really stupid, but hey, you can pay for this if you want to activate power tools. You can buy a license if you so desire for this disaster of an operating system um, that is so unbearably slow. I mean, it's not even funny. It does supposedly have the ability to run EXEs and MSIs, which I think that's wine. Um, I have not done that yet. I can't. I think we tried on Ubuntu 11. I think it kind of worked, but it kind of didn't. But hey, teach their own. Let's go to about this computer and we can see, let's see, yep, Ubuntu free version. And this build was compiled on the 10th of June. So we're about 20 days out of date. This is their power tools update utility. And it just literally opens the GNOME store for OS updates. Pretty cool. Let's take a look here at Copilot. What actually is this Copilot? Um, and it is just a web link to Microsoft Copilot. Um, so let's ask it, uh, do you know anything about Ubuntu? Let's see what it says. Ubuntu, hey, look, it got it. Did you know that Copilot? Okay, it didn't let me type anymore. Uh, yeah, so it does know about Ubuntu, but it, I guess it doesn't know that it's on Ubuntu. Okay, right clicking, we can see customize, open as root, open internal, display settings, change background, desk lists, launcher, create a new document, and create a new folder. And in the file explorer, this is one last thing I want to take a look at here. I mean, it looks kind of like Windows 10 had a clash with like windows 3.1 here like it's not as polished but all the icons are the same like this is kind of a disaster like this looks like such a basic file explorer like it's not even come close to windows and this is apparently just a text file like it's literally just a text file that's kind of crazy so with that being said thank you for watching this video if you liked it make sure to subscribe for new around here as i do all kinds of different technology videos including device restorations with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.